Hi everybody. Today I thought we'd have a further look at the electronic DC load project and make some further improvements and changes to that. Uh, so I'll just quickly summarise what I'm planning on doing today and then we'll go through it in a little bit more detail. Well the first thing I'm going to have a look at is uh, improving the way we measure the load voltage. At the moment we measure the load voltage and as we draw more current we're seeing a drop in that voltage so we're not getting an accurate reading. So I'm going to include a remote voltage sense circuit to improve that situation. I'm also going to uh, add additional power MOSFETs to give us a, a greater power handling capability and I've made yet again some further changes to the software for this project. One of those changes has allowed me to now input the initial entry via the keypad uh, as well as using the rotary encoder so you can use both so you can enter the initial setting with the keypad and then you can alter it on the fly if you wish with the rotary encoder. Uh, I've also found a nice project case for this uh, DC load project. I'll show you that and we'll have a look at uh, how we can build that into the project case today. And finally, if we get a little bit more time, I'll cover off uh, some of the uh, alternative uh, power MOSFETs that we could use on this project in place of the ones that I've used so far to date. So let's have a look at these in a little bit more detail. The first thing we're going to have a look at is improving the way we measure the load voltage. Uh, at the moment we're simply measuring the load voltage across the load terminals here by having a simple potential divider across them uh, with some form of trimming to give some uh, calibration. But unfortunately, even if you calibrate it with the trimmer, as you increase the current flow, you're getting a voltage drop. And the reason for that is due to the resistance in the wires coming from the device under test and also on the tracks in the power part of the circuit here through the MOSFET and the power sense resistor there we're getting a voltage drop also on the printed circuit. So we're getting uh, resistance here, resistance there, also we're getting resistance in the tracks all through the power circuitry here and all of that is adding up and giving us an error. So what we want to try and do is monitor the voltage directly on the device under test rather than monitor it on the load terminals of the DC load. And to do that we're going to add something called a voltage sense circuit. Just before we have a look at the uh, voltage sense circuit, just a couple of changes that I need to point out we make into the original uh, circuit. Uh, that is uh, this potential divider here where we have a 91k and a 20k preset uh, we're now going to remove those so R13 and RV2 will be removed from the main printed circuit board and the 2k resistor we've got there as R11 I'm going to replace that now with a 10k resistor and uh, we're going to connect to that point there our voltage sense circuit is going directly to there. So in order to overcome this issue we have with the resistance of the cables and the resistance of the tracks on the PCB affecting our reading of the load voltage, ideally what we need to do is sense that voltage directly on the load itself with separate wires in which no current is flowing through them. And we have to do that in the context that the sensing circuit we're going to use is using the same ground potential as the load itself. In order to do that we're going to use an operational amplifier today but it will be configured as a difference or a differential amplifier where instead of measuring the voltage between one of the input terminals and ground we're simply going to measure the difference voltage between the plus and minus terminal of the op amp. And here we see a configuration where that's done and you'll notice straight away some similarities with normal uh, non-inverting and inverting op-amp circuits where we have a uh, feedback loop there, a negative feedback loop, R1, R3, and we have a potential divider on the uh, non-inverting input, uh, R2, R4. And we're going to connect V1 and V2 directly across the load of, uh, of our circuit, and that will measure the, the difference voltage across the actual load itself, and giving us a true representation of that difference and therefore the output voltage here will be proportional to that difference voltage. And that's irrespective of what's happening with the ground potential here uh, and that's due to the common mode voltage of the op-amp. The 
plus and minus input terminals of the op amp can drift up and down slightly without affecting the output reading and this is because we're simply measuring the difference voltage on the input terminals. Now you'll see this type of circuit used where it's configured to have unity gain in which case all of the values of these four resistors would be exactly the same but in our circuit today you may recall that we need to divide our voltage down by 50 to get the uh, representation we need for the rest of our circuitry. So I'll be choosing values here as you'll see to do that for us. For those conditions the voltage output will be equal to this formula here. I'm not going to go through all the details of it today, that's a, probably another video, but uh, under this configuration with V1 effectively at zero volts uh, the output here is equal to V2 and then we take R4 divided by R2 plus R4 and then multiply that by R1 plus R3 over R1 and uh, then multiply the whole lot by the input voltage and that will give us the output voltage there. There you see now I've uh, put in the resistor values I've chosen for the uh, send circuit today. I've got uh, 1 mega ohm resistors on the input and 20k the ground return there and 20k on the feedback resistor and I'm just showing you here that uh, connecting the sense inputs to the load V1 goes to the uh, negative end of the load and V2 to the positive end of the load. So if we drop these value resistors now into our formula here you can see what that gives us is the uh, voltage output is equal to V2 times 0.02 and that means that whatever the difference voltage we have there between V1 and V2 uh, we get exactly a fiftieth of that coming out at V out and that's what we feed on now to our uh, main PCB. Now one important point here is that all of these resistor values need to be uh, high tolerance so I've, I've selected 0.1% tolerance uh, to maintain the stability of this particular circuit. Uh, interestingly uh, the resistor divider network here uh, if you remember on the original design we had to divide the uh, load voltage sensing uh, by a 50th uh, so we, we're taking it from the positive end of the load uh, but you see here 1 meg and 20k don't give us exactly a 50 divided by 50 uh, they give us divide by 51 uh, but I've chosen standard resistor values there and in any case that's going to be compensated by the gain of the op amp and the selection of the uh, feedback resistor there and what we find with this particular design is that the uh, amplifier gain as you see here in the formula is 1.02 so it's amplifying the signal by 1.02 uh, and so uh, it compensates for the error we have there with that potential divider and we get exactly a 50th coming out. Here we see the details of the voltage sense circuitry uh, using today. Uh, I've designed this so it will be uh, produced on a small uh, printed circuit board which will then link into the main uh, PCB. Uh, I'm using uh, two uh, ICs one is the operational amplifier here, we're using as a differential amplifier, the OPA277. And I'm using a voltage converter as a charge pump, the ICL7660. And that's going to give us a negative 5 volt supply, which is derived from the plus 5 volt supply there. And the reason behind that is I wanted to use a, a split supply for the uh, differential amplifier to ensure that the output voltage there could go down to zero if required. Although you can get uh, op amps that are uh, designed as rail to rail op amps with a single supply, uh, you can never quite get down to zero on the output. So I thought for the sake of adding this additional uh, IC in here, which is fairly cheap, uh, we can get the uh, output down there if we need to down to zero by having the split supply. The input to the op amp is going on pins 2 and 3 by the uh, 1 mega ohm resistors and you'll see here that they go to the plus and the minus of the sense terminals on the DC load. Um, 
We also have some means here, there's a 20k preset between pins 1 and 8 uh, and that gives some form of uh, offset nulling and if we do find we've got a, any uh, sort of offset voltage between pins 2 and 3, to null that out we can trim it with that 20k preset there. I've got a little bit of decoupling on the uh, positive and the negative supplies to the op amp with 0.1 microfarad capacitors there and uh, I've got a 220 microfarad here which is giving some additional smoothing on the 5 volt rail there just to ensure that we don't get any interference coming back from the voltage converter on the 5 volt rail there it gives a, a little bit more uh, noise reduction by adding that uh, 220 microfarad there as well. The actual voltage converter IC, the ICL7660 uh, a simple little IC, it's an 8-pin package and all we need to use is two capacitors and I'm using two 10 microfarad capacitors here. Uh, just be careful, ensure that the uh, C5 here, this capacitor here, has got the uh, positive terminal going to ground. It's this little slip up that uh, you can make by wiring it the wrong way. So it's wired to reverse that you'd normally think positive to ground and the negative going to pin 5 of the IC. Um, the output from the uh, sense here, which is coming from pin 6, then goes to the main printed circuit board uh, as a sense voltage input. Uh, as I said earlier on, we'll dispense with the uh, voltage divider network that we had previously. Uh, so we've just got one wire going from, from there to the main PCB. Uh, the negative terminal here, although I've got that on the PCB, it's really just to give you access to ground. We don't need to wire that up to the main PCB because we already have the ground terminal here going to the main printed circuit board and the plus 5 volts going to the main PCB as well. So there you have the uh, full circuit and I think what we'll do next is uh, we'll have a look at uh, building this uh, on the uh, little printed circuit board. Here you see I've made a small printed circuit board for the remote sense uh, circuitry. Uh, so it's all mounted on that little PCB and then that will connect into the main printed circuit board. Uh, so very few components really. There's the uh, I've got two IC sockets but you could actually solder the ICs indirectly if you wish and dispense with those sockets. Although it, they could be handy if you want to test different ICs, certainly the op amp. There we have the uh, the op amp and the uh, voltage converter IC there. Uh, three capacitors, 220 microfarad and 210 microfarads. Uh, as you see there we've got a 20k horizontal preset and then we've got four resistors, two 1 mega ohm resistor and two 20k ohm resistor and all the resistors are 0.1% tolerance. Just a quick look at the completed uh, printed circuit board now for the remote send circuitry. Uh, not too many components on there, it's quite a small module which will uh, connect into the main printed circuit board now. The red and black wires there coming out are the sense input uh, wires that will go to the sense terminals on the front panel. And then the other three wires there, we've got uh, a red and black again there, which are the 5 volt inputs. And the orange wire is the output from the uh, remote sense module back to the main uh, printed circuit board. I'll just quickly show you the connections from the uh, remote sense uh, PCB to the main PCB. Uh, it's this uh, black, red and orange wire. The black and, and red is simply just supplying 5 volts to the uh, remote sense uh, PCB and the orange wire is the coming from the output on the remote sense uh, PCB. So it's uh, quite simple, there's the uh, three connections there. Next thing we're going to do is have a look at how we're going to assemble the uh, DC load in this little uh, project case today. Uh, this is a nice little case, uh, both the front panel here and the one also on the reverse easily removed with just four screws and the top cover is also easily removed with two screws at either side. Uh, I'm actually going to replace the uh, front panel here with uh, another piece of aluminium I'm going to cut to size and I'm going to drill the holes in that for the controls and also the cutout for the liquid crystal display. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, and on the reverse side of the uh, box I'm going to replace that uh, panel there with a 
large long heat sink which will span the whole area of the box and that will give us the additional space to accommodate uh, extra uh, power MOSFETs to give us the increased power. Now the other thing we're going to do today is increase the power capabilities of this DC load by putting four uh, MOSFETs, power MOSFETs in parallel as I've shown here on this uh, drawing. Uh, what I've done here is I've connected four power MOSFETs here in parallel. I've joined their drains together, their sources together and the sources all go through the same 0.1 ohm sense resistor to the load. Uh, what I have done though is isolate the gates with their separate 100 ohm uh, resistors there and that stops any ringing or instability in any individual MOSFET. Having said all that, this arrangement is not ideal because you will never get two MOSFETs to be identical, even of the same type. So you may find that one MOSFET conducts more than another with the same gate drive voltage and therefore you will get some unbalance in this circuit and if this particular MOSFET here say gear conducts uh, harder than any of the other three because the on resistance is lower it will get hotter. But the interesting thing about the MOSFETs is that when you look at the on the data sheet if you look at the characteristic of their on resistance against temperature you'll see that it's got a positive temperature coefficient so as the temperature rises the on resistance increases and if the on resistance of the MOSFET increases the current flowing through it will decrease so it has some form of self leveling if there's any unbalance in this circuit by the, the sheer fact that as any individual MOSFET gets hotter its resistance, its on resistance will increase and bring the current down so that has some uh, ability to correct for any imbalance in this circuit. It's not 100% but it does work quite well and what I found in practice is that uh, whatever the total power handling capability in theory suggests it would be, it wouldn't be four times the value of each MOSFET uh, added together, it would be normally about 20% less than that. So only about 80% efficient uh, if you parallel MOSFETs together in this way. But having said that, it works quite well and it certainly gives you the increased power handling that uh, you may need. And that's what we're going to do. And I'll show you how I'm going to uh, achieve that on the uh, project today. Here we now see the, uh, the large heat sink I've uh, moved on to. I'm going to mount this across the, the back of the project case. It'll span the whole back of the project case. Uh, I found this uh, nice heat sink on eBay and simply cut it down to size. Um, what I have done is made provision here, uh, I've drilled the holes already, to take the, uh, the MOSFETs and the uh, temperature sensor, the LM35 there, and at the far side here we're going to mount the, uh, the power resistor, the uh, 0.1 ohm sense resistor. You can see here the components we have that's going to be mounted on there. There's the four power MOSFETs the fixings for them. I've got some uh, insulators, some uh, hole insulators there and some mica. I'm going to use mica washers this time with heat sink compound. There's the LM35, there's the 0.1 ohm uh, power sense resistor and that will simply be mounted straight onto the heat sink without uh, an insulator. Well here now we see all the uh, MOSFETs mounted on the heat sink together with the LM35, the uh, temperature sensor there in the middle and on the right hand side there we've got the uh, 0.1 ohm sense resistor. I've bent all the leads up on the uh, power MOSFETs there and the LM35 and my intention is I have a piece of um, matrix board here which I'm going to mount the uh, leads of the MOSFETs and the LM35 through which will then make it easier to solder the other components on. So uh, I'll do that and we'll have a look. Here we now see all the MOSFETs wired up on the heatsink. I've used heavy gauge copper wire there, at least 14 gauge wire, to strap all the sources of the MOSFETs together and then connect that to the 0.1 ohm sense resistor. Uh, and for the drain, this, a similar idea there. I've got the uh, heavy duty, uh, heavy gauge copper wire there, uh, connecting them together as well. Um, the connections then will be these two points here at the end of the copper wire which we'll use later. 
The gate of the MOSFETs each have their own uh, 100 ohm uh, resistor um, and uh, then they're joined together at the other side uh, with the yellow wire you see there and then that goes to the uh, control circuit on the main PCB. Now the other thing I've done today for this project I've produced this uh, template, this front panel template which we'll use as a cutting and drilling template but also I've printed it onto some nice uh, white glossy paper using an inkjet printer uh, the back of which is uh, uh, adhesive so you've got to you peel off the backing and that then will stick onto your uh, metal front panel so what we're we going to do first of all is we're going to use this to cut out mark and then drill the holes on the front panel and then stick this on here we see now the front panel which I've cut to size and uh, marked and then drilled all the holes and cut out the slots for the display and the slot there which will take the cable for the uh, keypad so the keypad cable will simply slot through there. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to uh, stick on the uh, front fascia there and then just cut out the holes and the area for the display and the slot for the keypad and then we'll come back and have a look. Here we now have the, uh, the front panel with the fascia stuck onto it. Uh, I've carefully cut out all of the holes and the slots uh, using one of these craft knives. You need a sharp craft knife just to carefully cut out the holes in the slots. So the next thing is we'll uh, look at uh, the components we're going to use now to mount onto the front panel. Here we now see the uh, all the components I'm going to mount onto the front display. Uh, there's the LCD and that's going to be mounted using these uh, nylon screws there. You've, I'm using these uh, the 25 millimeter long M3 screws. I'm using some 10 millimeter spacers to hold it off at the back of the uh, panel and uh, there's the uh, nylon nuts. Uh, I'm using four terminals there, uh, two red, two black and I've got the uh, switch here which I'm going to mount there which will enable us to switch the sense input on or off. The keypad will be mounted there and the cable will go through the slot here we've got the rotary encoder that's going to go there. I've now got the load on off button mounted there rather than on the keypad and the power on off switch is simply going to be a latching push button uh, the one I'm using here. Now the other nice thing I found, I found this quite nice uh, knob for rotary encoders with, with the indent in and I'm going to use that to, to uh, finish off the, uh, uh, the front panel. So let me mount these components and we'll come back and have a look. Here we now see the uh, front panel with all the components mounted. Uh, I think it looks quite uh, neat. Uh, it's nicely finished off with the little rotary encoder knob there, which I managed to find. I'll give you details of that. Uh, the actual fascia for the front panel, which is also the template, I'll provide that as a download for you. Uh, just a quick look on the reverse side of the front panel. So that's the... Uh, reverse side and then we just simply need to wire that up. So that's the uh, the front panel completed. I now have the uh, the front panel mounted on the project case and also I've mounted the heatsink on the back of the project case as well. I did actually put a little bit of a infill there of aluminium just to block that gap there. So I think we're ready now to uh, mount the PCB in the bottom of the uh, project case. I now have the main printed circuit board and the small remote voltage sense PCB mounted on the base of the project case and in both cases I've raised them up from the base of the case I've mounted them on some uh, nylon 15 millimeter nylon spacers that just stands it off the, the the base of the project case and gives you some access uh, underneath. So uh, I'll just tilt it forward you can see the the wiring to the front panel there so I've got the wires going to the load terminals there I'm using heavy duty wire there at least 14 gauge if not better and that wire is going to the rear of the cabinet to the heatsink to the MOSFETs and then I've got the sense wires coming from the remote voltage sense PCB there going to these other two terminals here the sense terminals and there's the sense switch and simply all that's doing is that uh, when you're not using the sense input terminals 
it's simply switching the sense wires directly to the load terminals there so at least you get some reading albeit that you'll then get a little bit of an error. You'll see also on the other side I've got the rotary encoder wired up now and the push button is wired up there for the load on off. Uh, I haven't yet uh, mounted the power jack socket on, I'll need to do that a little bit later on as, as with the on off switch as well. We'll just tilt it back, you can see the wiring at the back there. Uh, you'll notice I've put a, a fuse down there now which is uh, in series with the load give some protection there and uh, you'll see the the wires going to the load. Um, now one thing I've uh, just a little bit concerned about is the resistance of the copper wire even though I've used heavy duty copper wire there uh, the way it's arranged at the moment uh, uh, the far MOSFET there has got further for the current to flow before it gets to this current sense resistor there. So I may have to change that once I test it. If I've got any errors, then what I may have to do is maybe uh, move the uh, current sense resistor to the middle and then move the uh, temperature sensor to where the current sense resistor is now. And also try and keep the length of the leads from the source of each of the MOSFETs the same as it goes to the sense resistor. But we'll see what it, what it uh, works like when we connect it like this. And if we've got an error, we'll make those changes. Well I think at this stage what I'll do, even though I haven't got the uh, power button uh, wired up yet or the power connector properly mounted, I'm just going to quickly power the unit up and make sure it's uh, working because I've got all the other wires connected and test the, uh, the new function on the keypad. So let me switch on. And uh, if you remember that uh, when we're making a setting, in this case this is constant current, we can use the uh, rotary encoder. So we can turn up, in this case we limited it to 5 amps. And by pressing the encoder button it moves the cursor to the next position, you can change that. Now in addition to that we can also now enter the setting with the keypad. Uh, and I'm using the star button on the keypad as a decimal point and the hash uh, key there as the entry key. So if I were to press 1.523 and what you'll see is that I echo that uh, input at the bottom line there. Uh, nothing's changed yet on the set input but when I press the hash key it sets the uh, setting there to exactly what we entered with the keypad. So that seems to work. And what you'll find is that if you were on, uh, say, constant uh, power, we can do the same there. We can enter in 25.5 watts, say, enter that, and that also enters there. So we can do it on the three functions for the uh, constant uh, current, constant power, also constant resistance. So we could type in there, say, 20 ohms. And that works fine. Now one thing I didn't do is when you go to the uh, battery capacity mode and you select in this case let's say LiPo, um, that at the moment only works by the uh, rotary encoder. Uh, the key entry doesn't work on the battery function at the moment because I couldn't echo on the bottom row of the display. Uh, so um, unless we change the way we do this for the moment I'm just leaving the battery mo mode as it was. But at least we've got the function of the keypad entry for the other three basic uh, operations. Right we've got the the unit now all assembled um, the uh, power socket and the zero button will be at the back of the unit um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to power the unit up, I have it connected to a power supply at the moment, but to the power supply switched off. Uh, that little uh, noise you can hear in the background is just the fan on the, uh, on the power supply. So let me just switch the unit on. So you get the intro screen, it then defaults to the constant current mode, and uh, we, you notice there we've got just a slight error reading there on the 
should be zero so I'm going to press the zero button now the back so we've zeroed the uh, display and uh, I'm now going to set the current with the rotary encoder initially to one amp and I'm going to press the, the sorry before I press the load on I'll better switch the power supply on so I switch the power supply on and uh, we have a reading there of uh, 5 volts just over 5 volts I've set the current to 1 amp so I press the load on and the load is on now you notice here I've got the the load wires the thick gauge wire 14 gauge wire they go to the power supplies the load I've got some thinner wires here the sense wires going directly to the terminals on the power supply and the sense switch is down to on so we're using the sense leads and you can see it has uh, there's very little drop if any on the voltage that we're reading whether we switch the load off or switch the load on sorry switch the load on and uh, if I were to switch out the sense circuit you'll just see the effect that has and you can see that you get quite a considerable drop there in the 5 volts with, uh, with not using sense terminals switch the sense back on again and we're back up at 5 volts I'm now going to switch the load off again I'm now going to enter a current using the keypad so this time I'm going to enter 2.123 press the hash enter key you can see now that's entered the setting there I'm now going to switch the load on again we're now drawing just over 2 amps we have a slight discrepancy on the current reading there but I can uh, calibrate that out in software later and you'll notice that the voltage is still reading more or less 5 volts um, again if I were to switch out the sense leads because we're now drawing just over 2 amps you can see that has quite a dramatic uh, effect on the on the voltage I'll switch the sense back on again I'm now going to switch the load off and I'm going to use the rotary encoder to take the current back down again and uh, if we press the the button again on the rotary encoder it will move the cursor across so I can zero that go back again sorry I'll just zero it now to uh, to one amp. There we go, and uh, just switch the load back on again. So we're now drawing one amp, and uh, I'm now going to step the voltage up and uh, have a look at the. Uh, you can have a look at the display as I step the uh, the voltage up. I'll take it all the way up to 10 volts at the moment so we're now at, at 10 volts at 1 amp so let's take it a little bit higher take it to around 20 volts at 1 amp so we're now drawing uh, around 20 watts uh, you'll notice the temperature going up there and uh, we're still okay actually at that with that temperature I have no fans in the project box at the moment what I will do later is maybe put one or two fans inside the box to uh, keep the heat sink cool but I have got quite a large heat sink on there now so I'm going to uh, switch the load off let's now quickly have a look at one of the other modes let's go to constant power and uh, I'm going to enter 20 watts with the uh, keypad 20 and press the enter so I've set it at 20 watts I'm now going to press the load on again and you can see there that uh, we're drawing 20 watts or thereabouts with that setting it's holding that constant so it's working like it was previously uh, I'm now going to switch the load off and just go to constant resistance mode 
I'm going to set the uh, resistance this time, so let's say to uh, 10 ohms. And then switch the load on again. At 10 ohms there we're operating at around 2 amps, so it's just over, it's about 41 watts. Uh, at the moment I've got the uh, power limit set still at 50, uh, but I'll probably change that because now that we've got four power MOSFETs there, I'm going to probably increase that up to 99.99 for the moment. So I'll switch the load off again. So that seems to be working quite well. And the, uh, the battery function uh, works as previously. There's no, no change on that. I'll uh, just press the D. We go into battery mode. And the same as we had uh, on the previous video. You select which battery type you want. It uh, tells you that. And then goes into the battery mode. I won't go through that again. We, I covered that on the, uh, on the previous video. Well, I thought I'd just show the unit working at around 30 volts on the load input there and uh, I've got the current at the moment set at 1 amp in constant current mode so let's just uh, switch the uh, load on so that's operating at uh, 30 volts at 1 amp uh, giving us uh, around 30 watts uh, that seems to be handling quite well the current, the temperature sorry, is going up, up a little bit uh, but it's still within its safe tolerances and we do have four power MOSFETs at the back there handling that uh, that current. Let me just uh, press the rotary encoder button and move the cursor along a little bit and uh, I'm, as, it's, as the load is still on I'm, I'm just going to alter the current on the fly here using the rotary encoder so uh, I'll go to 1.1 and you'll see the power rating going up take it all the way up and then uh, at the moment I've got this set to cut out if it reaches 50 watts it cuts out and uh, it says we exceeded power so it just switches the load off automatically but uh, this unit is now capable of going much higher than that so what I will probably do is, is change the software uh, limit to give us a maximum of 99.99 or something like that but that's something you can easily change Right, well I think I'm going to uh, leave the project there for today. I think we've done quite a lot today. Uh, I didn't quite get round to looking at the alternative uh, power MOSFETs for this, but I will put some information down below in the uh, parts list uh, details for that and probably cover that at a later video. Uh, I have been looking at maybe other uh, options for this, other functionality. One is adding maybe a transient mode, which gives you a pulse option and uh, also we probably have a look at making further changes to the software to improve that and add some uh, additional menus uh, which will give us the ability maybe to uh, set the cutoff voltage for the battery mode as well. Uh, one thing I still need to do is add some fans into this unit to keep it cool although the large heat sink seems to be doing a good job but to be on the safe side I think it would be best to add one or two fans inside the unit uh, and I'll do that at a later stage. Um, I will put some links down below, uh, I'll give you the details of the changes to the circuit, especially the uh, remote sense circuit. I'll also give you the artwork for the PCB for that, uh, in addition to the artwork for the front panel fascia here and the, the templates. Um, and I'll try and put some sort of a parts list together as well. And I'll also give you the latest version of the software, I think I'm currently on software version 12, but all of that will be down below and uh, you can download that for yourself. Well, uh, if you found this of interest and uh, useful, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you all again soon next time. Bye for now.